Good morning and welcome to that 1870s edition of Canuary. I am so excited to be a part of this collaboration. It is running the entire month of January in 2021. And if you haven't been following it along, Lisa over at Sutton's Days is bringing a whole bunch of content creators together to bring you some awesome ideas for canning in the middle of winter to fill your pantry for the year. Today is our turn. And if you've missed the past 16 days now, there will be a playlist linked below where you can go and watch them all. Stay tuned to the end because there's information about the giveaway I wanna share with you. We are making taco soup. I love Mexican flavored soups and I'm using a lot of pantry ingredients to pull this together. Okay, so to get us going, what I've done is this morning I spent time and browned up some, a pound of ground pork and a pound of ground beef with two onions. So I'm putting that in my big roasting pot and all I'm doing is I just need a big enough pot to get all this heated up together. I have, I don't know how much would you say that is? Probably a cup and a quarter, cup and a half of diced bell peppers, all different colors, fun. I chopped up mm, six or seven jalapenos that I had frozen in the pantry. And then what I've brought up that I'm totally making this up, but I think it's gonna be super tasty. I have a quart jar of salsa verde, a quart jar of salsa, just plain. One quart of Mexican tomato sauce, two quarts of chicken broth. So let me get those opened up and poured in. Oh. And guys, I get so many questions on this can opener tool. It is called Pry a Lid. It is an antique vintage thing. I don't think that they make this anymore, but you can still find them all the time on eBay or Etsy. We got this as a gift from one of you. Thank you. And this is a great way to use up um, Salsa, if you have tons still on your pantry shelf, some years are better than others, I know for us. So a lot of times, like these are 2018 jars of salsa. And I like my 2019, 2020 salsa much better. So I like to use the older jars for soups and things like that. All right, that's some good goodies. Now, I also get lots of questions if I use reusable Tattler lids, or I think there's another brand too, and I do. Um, just not my favorite, because it's extra steps, and they're not the easiest to get off all the time. But I definitely have a good stock, so I really don't have to worry about running out of lids very often. So that was the first quart of chicken broth, second quart. And now we will add two more quarts of water and see where we are from there. We'll do that good for now. Um, also this morning, I cooked up some black beans and kidney beans. So I'm gonna be adding four cups of each. Okay, let me bring you over here and show you what it's looking like. Just how full my pot is. Get this all stirred together. That looks like good taco soup if you ask me. 
All right, one more ingredient to add, and that is taco seasoning. So I mixed up um, a whole bunch of taco seasoning this morning, and I think I'm gonna probably add, because all my tomato based ingredients like my salsa and my sauce have a lot of this type of seasoning in it already. So I'm probably just gonna add like four tablespoons to start with and then I'll taste after it warms up. And if we need to add more, we will. All right, let's get that warming up. Um, I may come back and add two more quarts of water, just so you know, but how easy was that? Dump and go. I mean, there was a little prep in the morning with cooking the beans and just to let you know what I did there too. I did not soak my beans overnight. I got lots of great tips on how other people cook their beans in my last bean video. All I did was I rinsed them really well, then I covered them with like three or four inches of water, brought them up to a boil, once they were at a boil, I cut the heat off and let them sit for an hour. Rinsed really well. And um, now we're using them. So we'll see how that goes. If I end up not, the great thing about pre-cooking beans is it relieves a lot of the undigestibles out of the beans that give you that gassy feeling afterwards. And I usually don't have a ton of problems consuming beans if I cook them that way. So this way, we'll see if we're not stinking up the house <laughs> afterwards, but we'll see. So let me get this on, and I'm probably just gonna turn it on about 350 and get it up high heat as quick as I can. I've got jars in the dishwasher right now sterilizing. So I'll probably see you guys back in about an hour and we'll get this cannon up. That's simple. So anyway, like I said, maybe while you have a chance and you've got a break this uh, coming week and you've got items on your pantry shelves, I bet you can make some delicious soups. So go look for inspiration through all the other channels that are participating in this month's playlist um, and see if you can't find some inspiration to use some of those things hidden in your freezer or on your pantry shelves that you're just not using, but you can turn into something else and make something really great. So see you guys back in a bit. Okay guys, I am back. It's been probably a good solid hour. The soup is all heated through. Do you wanna see? Ooh, doesn't that look pretty? So I'm gonna set you guys down. We're gonna fill up our jars, but there's one more ingredient that I need to throw in and stir in before I get going. And I didn't mention this at the beginning of the video, just forgot. I pulled out a thing of frozen corn. So just, I'm trying to think. All of this was homegrown, already preserved on the pantry shelf items or frozen. Um, with the exception of the ground beef. That was store-bought. So pretty, pretty fun. So I'm gonna start filling up jars and I'll bring you guys down here and you can watch the process. And we're just going to one inch of headspace and that's it. Doesn't that look great? Oh, so yummy. So kind of what I'm doing is I'm getting from the bottom of the pot like two solid ladlefuls of some like thick solids and then I kind of just scoop from the top um, for the rest of the fill. And there's bits and pieces in there but it's not heavy duty. Now, when you serve this, you could serve it with a dollop of sour cream mixed in, some cheese, 
some crushed tortilla chips. Um, you could probably even add some little pasta pieces in it if you wanted to add like a thick carb to it. I think it just turned out really colorful and beautiful. It's a super hearty soup, a good stick to your bones winter soup. And for me, because I made everything and or grew everything, I'm gonna get all of this soup for the cost of that package of ground beef, which would have been, I'd guess around three bucks or so. So. A very, very cost affordable way to extend my pantry with some quick and delicious dinner meals, ready to go, lunches, serve it with some cornbread. Yes, please. One final step to do, and we are gonna just clean the rims of our jars and put our lids on. So I just get a little vinegar on my washcloth. Center your top finger tight. Guys, that is gonna be some good soup. Yummy. So I ended up with two, four, six, eight, nine quarts and one pint. And considering I started with, what was it? Mexican sauce, two salsas, and two um, broths from my pantry. So five quarts turned into nine quarts. Not bad. How about that? I'm hoping it's gonna be tasty, super tasty. I did taste it out of the pot and it is divine, delicious. It's gonna taste different for everyone, right? There's no specific um, measurements with respect to spices and things because I used salsas. You can go back and probably look at 2018 videos if I posted one on how I made my salsas. Um, but you get the idea. Just use what you got in the house and make up something new. And how fun is that? Like if you didn't want bell peppers in it, you wouldn't have to use it. If you didn't like jalapenos, but you have other chilies, totally feel free to substitute. So this is my style, my way of doing things. Make do with what you have. Don't feel like you gotta go out and get just the right ingredient. Um, can what your family eats. Can what you have available. Make meals out of what you have available and don't hesitate to be creative in the kitchen. Sometimes it won't turn out and give yourself grace in, grace in those moments, but other times you're gonna be like, I gotta remember how I did that. <laughs> so I think this is one of those. Remember, one jar of salsa verde might have just been the trick to magic. Who knows? So then I'm going to throw these in the pressure canner. You do have to pressure can soups. And when um, all is said and done, I'll come back and I will show you the end result and tell you about that giveaway. So what I love most about my canner, um, something in the bottom, it's down in there. Hold on.
I'm going to pressure can this for 75 minutes. For quarts, it would be 60 minutes if you did pints. And I don't ever hesitate just to let you guys know. Some people might have opinions about it that if it's pints, don't mix them. I just go with the highest number. So I'm going to let this come up to pressure. We're going to steam it out through the vent for 10 minutes, put the weight on, bring it up to pressure for 10 pounds for my area and start the timer at that point. So one little tip about the All American canner that if you're thinking about getting it or you maybe you got it for Christmas and you're nervous like I was the first time I used it, when it's at zero pounds of pressure, it still often has some pressure in there. So I don't know if you heard that. When I take the weighted gauge off, I kind of just let the rest of whatever's left come out of the vent before I unscrew it. Oh, you guys, it smells so good. Oh, I'm so excited. I want to eat some now. Oh, looks amazing. Nice. Smells amazing. So delicious. Oh, I'm really happy. I've never, as long as I've been canning, I've never canned the same exact soup twice. And that's the super fun thing about canning at home. You're not stuck with just the same old, same old off the canning or the store shelves. You can make your own variations and This is a classic jar too. Darn, this happens. And it's okay, it's a bummer. I'm gonna have to wash my jars. I lost a whole can of soup in there. Bottom fell off. And it's an old classic care. That stinks. It's just, jars get old and they'll get a little weak spot in them. And it's so hard to see for with your naked eye. What a bummer. It was funny when I was canning, I thought I heard it too. I thought I heard a boop. No, it's, I can't do it. I think it's like boop. You can like hear a click. And sometimes like I only had three jars on top. Sometimes it's just the jars like adjusting and moving in the canner. So I was like, hmm, hopefully that wasn't a jar breaking, but sure enough it was. But hey, all in all, still not bad. Um, two, four, six, eight, nine jars of soup for the cost of a pound of ground beef. I'll settle for that. So, giveaway. Lisa is giving away a pressure canner, guys. And those are hard to come by these days, like super hard to come by these days. The only thing that you have to do to enter is leave a comment. She's gonna pick a random comment throughout all of the videos going through Canuary. So go back, watch the playlist, leave a comment, and you'll be entered to win. And I, I guess maybe the last video I, I should have for sure followed through on remembering all the, when she's giving it away. I think it's the last video of the Canuary series. But if you go watch her very first video, the kickoff January 1st, she tells you all the details. So if you're in the market, or even if you just wanna go see all the other great content um, creators and everything that they're canning out there, um, get inspired, go watch the playlist. Again, I'll link it below. Thanks for coming along.
I'm so glad I got this canner empty because I still have two half pots of beans that I need to can up. So if you're interested in what I'm going to do with those, stick around and I'll have more videos coming your way. Thanks guys for coming along. If you're new to the channel, thanks for being here. And we'd invite you to subscribe and follow along as we head into 2021. Talk to you guys later.